Hey, praise the Lord. Let me get my coffee and get in camera here right quick. Just want to give you guys a, a brief update of where we're at. A little four or five minute quick report. Sometimes that can be just a minute longer than that. But uh, we've been working diligently, feverishly, and fervently, and prayerfully on a re-entry plan for beginning our services at Believer's Fellowship for both campuses. In fact, I have in my hand here uh, a letter you'll be getting. I'll, I'll send it out uh, in the morning. You'll, you'll get it in your email box, so be sure and check. It's called the Re-Entry Plans for Believer's Fellowship uh, uh, Worship Services. And so it'll give you the criteria by which we're making decisions and weighing these things out, what's involved in the process. It talks about the federal plans and the state plans that are involved in this and the phases that are involved. If you're familiar with Governor Abbott's, uh, Governor Abbott's uh, uh, press conference yesterday, he talked about the phases. And now that we're in phase one of opening, reopening Texas, uh, that's where we are. Phase two is, is where uh, we're targeting. I've been on a lot of phone conversations the last week with pastors from all over our area in the spring, Tomball, Magnolia area. I was on a conference call uh, just uh, a couple hours ago. Magnolia pastors, an hour or two before that, I spent time talking to several spring area pastors. And in the conference call I had, even Tomball pastors, Woodlands pastors were, were part of that as well. A group of about 12. But we're all really, you know, I appreciate the heart of all these men of God because they really are seeking the will of God in the, uh, for their church and the direction. Uh, we may all start on a, a different date, but we're all starting within probably a week of each other, the way it's looking. We're targeting that, that, that second phase of Governor Abbott. We're hoping it's sometime after May 18th, 19th when he makes the announcement. So it could be as early uh, if everything continues to progress properly with the, the, the flattening of the curve. Or it could be a few week or two after that, but May 24th, maybe uh, 31st, somewhere in that particular area is what we're looking for. We also are trying to get the church ready with the proper spacing and allotting the seats and the sanitizers all available. Uh, for those who want to wear a mask, who don't own a mask, will be able to pick up one when they come to the services. We want all those kind of things in place, ready to go when the day hits. So we're, we're waiting on some orders of different supplies in regard to that as well. So. Uh, appreciate those who are doing so much within our body to help people in this regard. You know, in Harris County, there's a the, the mask uh, the, the proposal that's out, the regulation that's out there that has a thousand dollar fine. That uh, uh, if you'll listen to Governor Abbott, he overruled that. And the mayor comes back from Houston, says it's not overruled. So, anyway, we want to comply as much as possible with the laws of the land. Same time, we have to comply with the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And you know, that's always our first, our first criteria for every decision in our church and, and with our, our elders as well. But uh, praise the Lord, stay tuned. That letter will come to you and give you a little more detail about the processes. So pay attention to it and be praying with us over that as well. Uh, one note I have here is about, uh, oh yeah, great services Sunday. Special thanks to everybody who participated. Uh, and we've made the service so marvelous from our music team to, to the tech teams. God bless those guys. You continue to pray for them. They get out there every week. They're up here early uh, on Sunday mornings. We're shooting from the Magnolia campus, and they, they're, they're getting there quite early and preparing for those services. They're here uh, two, two and a half hours before the service even begins, getting things ready. I also spent some time today on, a, 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 on phone with many of you in our church. You're familiar with the name of Dr. Larry Holly. Dr. Harry Holly has been on lots of different... Uh, uh, Christian boards served in different capacities with the Southern Baptist Convention. Also was uh, uh, one of the founding leaders at SETMA, Southeast Texas Medical Association out of Beaumont. Uh, staying very in tune with what's going on with the virus, even though he just recently retired. He is still on top of all the events that are taking place. And uh, he says, listen, don't, you shouldn't be afraid. He said, and tell your people, they shouldn't be afraid. If, if your church is practicing these safety protocols, but if people enter the service, they're, you know, the first thing you ought to do when they come in is just go ahead and use the hand sanitizers that are available. Distance themselves, you know, be cognizant and conscious of one another over these few weeks that we're still going to be in these things or even a couple of months if we have to do this. You practice those, he said, you're, you're going to be safe. As soon as you go home, you, you're going to, as soon as you get home, you're going to change clothes and wash, those kind of things. The kind of things we'll talk to you about further as we get closer to that particular date. I do want to say just a brief word in closing, because I haven't said too much about it. I know every Sunday one of our campus pastors mentions the offering, but that's like a cuss word to some people. But the offerings are important because we're serving people and we're ministering to people, and it does take money to do those particular things. You guys have been great. That's why I really haven't had to say too much about it. This week the offerings were down a little bit uh, where they would normally be, and I just trust it because uh, some people just haven't 
gone by the church and dropped them off or put them in the mailbox or haven't gone to the online giving site. But I really want to remind you to do that. What really blessed my heart was to see so many of you that have responded by saying, hey, I put in extra money from that bonus check or whatever it was, the, the allotment that the, the government gave us, $1,200 per person in the family plus so much for kids. And I've seen people tithing off that. I even had one person who said, hey, half of that check that's been given to me by the government, I want it to go towards helping people in our fellowship or coming to our fellowship and need assistance, whether it's with food or paying bills. And so uh, we've been doing that. We've been helping people in, in those kind of situations, and especially with food and, and members in, in regard to their, their bills and stuff. So our church has been faithful to minister. Uh, you be faithful to help us continue to do that. We're, we're, we, this is something we are all in this together. Those of you who are sick of hearing that will understand what it means when we say it in regard to the church. Uh, it is important because we are doing our continued giving. I got a, I was on the phone today talking with our, leaving a message for our missionary in, in South Africa, leaving that we were sending, you know, his, the m money that they need. They're feeding children. They're working in prisons. They're doing tremendous work with Willie Dangler in South Africa. Uh, so I told him we were sending the money that, that for, for the first six months of this year to him to make sure he got it and to be looking for it because we want to support him. Uh, our churches in Cuba, we're continuing to work and support there, staying in a lot of contact with different people around the world. You know, I, I often tell people we're the biggest little church in the world because of the ministries that we carry out. I've been sharing with our friends in Belize. We're restructuring our conference for June, July there, if everything continues to go well. Uh, I got a note from my, one of my translators that we use in Cuba when we're working with pastors in the churches over there. It says, hello again, Pastor Arms, thank you for answering my email. I'm glad that you and your family are okay. It's a great blessing, you, you know, that you have to be able to watch your sermons online and that, that we have, content, we can watch them. But most churches in Cuba don't have the tools or the ability to do that. She's talking about our online streaming as well as posting to the internet. She said, plus just a very small percentage of church goers have internet to watch them. In our 500 member church that she attends, she says, uh, there's only about 40 people that connect there on the internet through an application called WhatsApp. So please pray for Cuba and the gospel in Cuba. Pray that people seek the Lord at home and that we are the same number or more people when we return to our churches and temples. We surely appreciate your prayers. Thank you in advance. God bless you more. Gisela, he says, speed us. Gisela is kind of nicknamed Gigi. She's one of the three translators that I've worked with over there. Uh, she and her husband are really involved in their church and ministry and also help us when we come and minister over there. So continue to pray for those people. Uh, they're suffering a lot more than what most of us are suffering. We have to shelter in place. So uh, our hearts go out to our friends in Cuba, our friends in Belize, our friends in South Africa, and anywhere else in the world you're watching from Sunday. We have people watching from different cities in Texas, different states, and, you know, and out of, we have people in Europe that are watching. So uh, let's continue to be faithful to the Lord. I love you. I thank God for you. And like I said, I don't want to take a lot of your time, just a quick word. So pay attention to the e-blast that come and to other announcements during the week. And we'll be in touch. God bless you. Thank you for watching.